Let's begin. So today we are going to talk about the E and the I, in particular met, meet, the E and E sound. But before we do that, I want to offer a quick introduction. So for some of you who are new, this, is, this, this class, this course is designed for all levels of learners, from the very beginner to the moderate or intermediate and to the advanced or where we deal with more difficult words or, um, and also sentences and sentence structures. So I try to include something for everyone, but generally the most difficult parts are at the end. So we start easy and we move to the difficult parts. So number two, I offer this free as an opportunity for you all to learn. And what you can do if you find this beneficial, you can share this um, live or my Instagram account or my YouTube account with your friends. Thank you. And my YouTube account, you can always find the link in my Instagram bio. You just click the link there and this will be uploaded onto YouTube. Now, how do you profit or benefit most from this video? You listen and repeat as I'm doing it so you have a live interaction. Number two, you listen again. If you want to do better, then you listen again on YouTube. And, the, and to be the best, you listen again and then record yourself. Recording yourself, I believe, is the key to changing or ameliorating, this is a very big word, to ameliorate, A-M-E-L-I-O-R-A-T-E, <laughs> to ameliorate your accent or to ameliorate anything means to improve it. If you want to ameliorate your accent, you have to practice this at least once during the week and record yourself and compare it to me. That is how you improve. The recordings can be painful at times, but oh, so very helpful. All right, let's begin. Now we're looking at the E as in uh, meet and A as in met, met, A. Now the two sounds produce a slightly different posture or position of your tongue in your mouth. So the E sound, you widen your mouth and your tongue goes slightly um, back. And with the E, the met, E sound, your tongue goes down to your bottom teeth. So they should be, the front of your tongue should be near the bottom or behind the bottom of your teeth. E, met. So the, both sounds our, the mouth is wide, but with meat, it's wider, like you're smiling. <clears throat> All right. Let's begin. All right, let's begin with the, the easier sound first. The easier of the two is the E sound. This is, I think, the easier. easier. The E uh, the, uh, will be a little bit more difficult by comparison. So let's begin. Key... Key, keys, keys, notice the Z at the end, not S, keys, we learned this two or three weeks ago, you can check the video, keeps, keeps, here we have the S sound, next line, P, P, this is the food, a pea and a pod. We have a beautiful saying, by the way, I'll just tell you, two peas in a pod. This is a beautiful expression. So if you see, a, I'm sorry to interrupt, but a little learning point, it's an advanced point, but we have an expression, they are like two peas in a pod. A pod is the little bean pod. You have two peas that you can eat. This suggest this this you say this when you see two people who are so close or in love, and they get along. They get along really well. They're like two peas in a pod. Beautiful. Finally, peace. Now this is a piece of pie. Piece. Piece of cake, but also you have peace. Same pronunciation, different spelling. Peace, 
P-E-A-C-E. Finally, the third line, scene. This is a scene in theater. We also have a word seen. I have seen him, S-E-E-N. So we have two sounds exactly the same. Next, seas. These, this is the body of water, sees, but as well, she sees him, she sees him. And finally, seat, seat. Now our target sound is in the middle and we're gonna compare it now with some others so it gets a little bit more difficult. I'm going to do one line at a time twice. You repeat after me. Ready? <clears throat> Met, meet, mate. Met, meet, mate. One more time because the first two are difficult. This is what we're comparing actually, the first two. Met, meet, mate. All right, second line. List, least, last. List, least, last. Now let's compare the first two because this is our focus. List, least. List, least. Now if you, if you struggle with these sounds, it's okay because a lot of people do, but you need to listen to this again. again. A listen to the recording. All right, let's do the third line. Bay, be, beer. Bay, be, beer. Now let's do the last two because it's tricky. They're tricky. Be, Beer. One more time. Be beer. Do you hear the R? The R changes it. Now we're going to add one more word to make it more difficult. I'm going to add the animal bear. Beer is what you drink. Bear, B-E-A-R, is the animal. The ferocious Animal, ferocious is an advanced word that I'll tell you about. Ferocious, F-E-R-O-C-I-O-U-S, I believe. I believe it's I-O-U-S, it might be O-U-S, but ferocious bear. All right, so let's do all three. Ready? B, beer, bear. Be, beer, bear. All right, you can practice that one as well later. The next one is difficult. Um, I think it's quite difficult. Let's, let's try it. Bit, beat, bet. Bit, Beat, bet. So we have I, E, E. Very difficult. One more time because this is so very difficult. Bit, I'm going to exaggerate. Bit, beat. Bet. Now we're going to look at these combinations later. We're going to look at the last two in combination in a future lesson. The beat bet is also a little bit tricky. Let's move on 
to the, the soft E sound. Are you ready? Now I've underlined, when it just has an E, I don't underline it because that's the natural sound in many instances, many cases. But I've underlined the alternative spellings when you have the soft E because you have to be sort of prepared for it. So we have to look for this. Are you ready? Test, death, red. One at a time now. Test, test, death, death. Red, red. <clears throat> Next line, friend, friend, said, said. Now listen to this, not sad. Listen to the difference, said, sad. Try it. Difficult. Said, sad. Very difficult. Practice that one as well. Finally, many. Many. <clears throat> many men. Many men. That will help you reinforce the E sound. To reinforce means to make stronger. Number the third line, check, check. So in, in America, we say check, please, when you're at the restaurant. When you're at the restaurant and you want the, the bill, we say check, please. Shelf, shelf. Now, if in Britain they have an expression, top shelf. Top shelf is generally really something really special, really good. And finally, leg. Leg. <clears throat> leg. Now, can I give you an idiom as well? I hope I'm not confusing you with these extra tidbits. Tidbits are little extra pieces of information. I'll give you a, a, a nice phrase. If you want a leg up on the competition, that means you want an advantage. And you're getting an advantage now by improving your accent and your pronunciation. To get a leg up on the competition is to be ahead of them, to be better than them. All right, let's distinguish the sounds. Okay, so we're gonna go through these again. Our focus is the middle sound, but we're going to see that it's difficult when we start to compare them with others. Man, men, mean. Man, men, mean. Let's try this. Man, Men, man, men. Now, we're going to do the female version. It's not on here, but this is a very tricky one that nearly everyone struggles with. The woman, women. Now listen to this, it's very, very difficult because it, of the spelling and the sound, they don't look they don't correspond, they don't correspond. So I'm gonna do singular plural. Woman, women. So the E eh is in the beginning, even though there's an O. Woman, women. One woman, many women, women. So there are two soft E's in the, in the plural. All right, let's, let's continue. Heard, head, had. Heard, 
head had. The last two, head had. Head had. <clears throat> Next, third row, mate met meet. Mate, met, meet. <clears throat> Mate is what the British say for friend. In America, we never use this word. In England or in Britain, they will say, hello, mate, or hey, mate. What's... We don't use this word. Mate, met, meet. And of course, nice to meet you is spelled M-E-E-T. All right, the last one is oh so difficult. Oh so difficult. This is a dramatic old expression. Oh so. Sit, set, sat. Sit. Set, sat. Let's try the first two together. Sit, set. Sit, set. Oh, one more time. This is difficult. I'm going to exaggerate. I'm going to prolong, or we have another word, elongate. To elongate, E-L-O-N-G-A-T-E, is to make longer. I'm going to make longer the vowels for emphasis. Sit, set. Sit, set. So you've got to really open your, open your throat, relax it, and speak from the back of your throat. Sit. Sit, set, set. This should be very relaxed so you have a, you can go deeper. And then we have another soft sound. Sat, at. One more time, all three. Sit, set, sat. <clears throat> Practice this page later in the week. Now, the spelling I tried to point out earlier, and I'll look at it here. You have the E sound on the top and the E sound, the met, E sound, men, at the bottom. So the long E and the soft or short E. And you can see how they are most frequently or commonly spelled. With the E sound, you have E, 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 A, and E, letter E like seen. And then with the, the soft E, as in men, it's very straightforward, E, E. Now, sometimes, and this is where it's difficult, the sometimes category is why we are having these classes, because it's not a completely phonetic language. You don't look at the word and understand how to say it, because we have these sometimes these exceptions. So this is why this is why we're here. So in the E sound, sometimes it's just the letter E, which of course then confuses you with the frequently soft E. So we have me and then I E peace. Then we have below with the soft E, um, we have E A, which is death. I-E, friend, A, Mary, not Mari, or Mary, and then A-I, said. What's interesting with Mary is if you change it to Mary, M-E, as in Merry Christmas, it sounds the same. Oh, I'm sorry, that's many, many, but Mary is a name, and if you change the Mary to E, and add an R, it's exactly the same, even though the letters are changing. Sorry, that's many. All right, I hope that 
it's clear. I do not recommend that you memorize these spellings because, for example, E-A in death, when you say peace with E-A, P, peace, that's a, a long E. How do you do this? How do you start to understand pronunciation? By exposure to the words, by encountering the language. In my classes every week is a good beginning. All right, so let's look at the phrases. Now we're gonna look at longer phrases with a soft E. Are you ready? My best friend. Now, now notice I only underline the, the soft E's that aren't with an E. So the E, as it sounds, I don't underline it because that's sort of natural. But the other ones, I want you to notice the spelling and associate it with the sound. So you have visual spelling and then you have the audio sound. So here we go. My best friend. A very fresh scent. A very fresh scent. Chest congestion. Chest congestion. <clears throat> chest, this is your chest. Congestion means it's full. You can't breathe normally. You're coughing maybe. You have a chest congestion. Number four, fell on her entrance. Fell on her entrance. If you're entering somewhere and you fall, that's what that means. Fell on her entrance. Actually, the A in entrance is also soft. Listen, entrance, very soft, both. Number five, tempted the guest. Tempted the guest. Number six, commendable quest. Commendable quest. A quest it's like an endeavor. You're going to try something. You're going to, you know, it's an aim, a goal of yours, this quest, often dealing with travel, actually. And commendable means I commend you for it. I respect you for it, a commendable quest. Now, the last two involve both sounds that we're focusing on today. Envied Ken's effort. Envied Ken's effort. Envy is like jealous. Number eight, dejected elephant. Now, the, this, this first word can be pronounced in two ways. Dejected is more American, and dejected is somewhere else. <laughs> so, I say per perhaps softer. Let's try it. We can say dejected elephant or dejected elephant something in the middle now we have sentences are you ready in retrospect i recognize the merits of the intense seminar so this is more difficult i want you to listen to the flow of the sentence and try to emulate, emulate is to copy, try to emulate, E-M-U-L-A-T-E, -E, try to emulate the flow. In retrospect, I recognize the merits of the intense seminar. In retrospect means to think about it after the event, to think about it after the event. and look at it from the from the from from the future from after post event number 2 against better judgment aaron commenced the event with a lecture on health
Against better judgment, Aaron commenced the event with a lecture on health. Do you hear my natural pauses and where I sort of have these sort of denouement, the sort of high moments in the, in the sentence? Listen again and try to emulate, copy the sentence flow. Let's do it one more time. This is where you start to become speaking natural English. Against better judgment, Aaron commenced the event with a lecture on health. <clears throat> And number three, when under stress, you should stretch, rest, and exercise. When under stress, you should stretch, rest, and exercise. All right, now we're going to get into some difficult ones that focus exactly on our subject. The E, the long and short E. Are you ready? <clears throat> we'll do these three times. Feet fit. Feet fit. So on the second one, I open my mouth, I relax my uh, larynx, my throat, and I try to go deeper. I try to speak with a deeper voice which means it's relaxed and I, I lower the tongue as well to the bottom teeth. Feet fit. 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 That's a difficult one for many people. Let's do number two. Heel, hill. Heel, hill. Heel, hill. All right, number three. Reach, rich. Reach, rich. Reach, rich. Rich. <clears throat> Next, beat, bit, beat, bit, beat, bit, bit, it, bit. This is very tricky, especially for Spanish speakers, I think. Spanish language speakers struggle with this. Heat, hit. Heat, hit. It, hit. <clears throat> Heat, hit. This is a difficult one. The next one's famous for its difficulty. Sheep, ship. Sheep, ship. Sheep, ship. And finally, seat, sit. Seat, sit, sit, sit. <clears throat> now what I want to do is go through just the second column, the soft E's. We're going to go right down all seven. Fit, hill, rich, bit, Hit, ship, sit. Practice that at home later. Listen to this again. There's, you need to practice. This is really critical and very difficult. 
But the reason this is so important is this causes communication confusion. If you don't distinguish these two sounds, they produce different words and you then fail to communicate. So this is why this is so very important and you need to practice it because communication is at stake. If something's at stake, that's what's in the balance. That's what is potentially lost. Let me say it again. Communication is at stake. S-T-A-K-E. It's a great phrase. If something's at stake, it means it's potentially lost. All right. Advanced sentences distinguishing sounds. The first one isn't so advanced, but it's difficult to pronounce. Please fit your feet into the sneakers. Please fit your feet into the sneakers. Now in England, I think England they say sneakers, if I remember correctly. In America, we didn't. I don't think we said, no, a little bit. We say tennis shoes. Like tennis, we say tennis shoes for sneakers in, in the U.S. All right, number two, the second sentence. I dug my heels into the hill and determined to climb it. I dug my heels into the hill and determined to climb it. <clears throat> now, why do I underline dug my heels into? Because it has two meanings. I'm, ha I'm playing with the words because to dig your heel, your heel is the back of your foot. If you dig your heel in, you physically do that so you don't fall down the hill. But there is a metaphorical or a saying, or you could even say an idiom here. To dig your heels in means you're not going to quit. You're not going to quit. And I, I challenge you to dig your heels into the pronunciation and accent classes that I have so that you can reach Mount Everest or reach the peak or the goal you have set. So this has two meanings. That's why this sentence is very interesting. Even though it looks normal, we have a play on words. You physically dig your heels in to climb the hill or you determine you will not quit and you will climb it. That sentence has two meanings and I find it very interesting. All right. Next, the final one, the vessel or ship was hauling many sheep between the Middle, e Middle and Near East and Central and North America. Now listen to how I group the country or the regions of the world. Listen to how I group them into couplets. Couplets are two. The vessel or ship was hauling. Hauling is to carry. Vessel is another word for ship. A big ship. A vessel is a big ship. The vessel or ship was hauling many sheep between the Middle East, the, the Middle and Near East, and Central and North America. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to the tongue twister. This is lasting much longer. I, we don't have much time for questions. Let's try it. I'm only going to do the tongue twister, the first one. You can practice the second one if you want. This is a very difficult soft e, uh, e sound here. The sixth, six, sheiks, sixth, sheeps, sick. So you can practice that at home and compare it with my version on YouTube. And finally, we have homework. For those interested, take a screenshot or a photo or watch it. Uh, it'll be recorded so you can always see it uh, on, you know, on YouTube. So you don't have to if, if you miss it. So this is the first homework. We're doing the E, e sounds. So we have met, meet. So you want to make sure you spell the word that is 
the obvious word, uh, the opposite or the, the in this sort of um, construction. So we have met, meet, and finish the others with the same sound distinction. That's the first homework. Homework number two is this sort of fun little game for maybe the younger learners. You have to draw the line. You can only go down. So it's you can only go vertical, which is down, or horizontal, which is across. You can't go diagonal. That's diagonal. It's not allowed. And you want to avoid... You want to avoid the soft sound, so only the E. You only move where you hear an E sound. And next week I will tell you what the answer, the path to victory is, or to freedom, because this is a labyrinth. And finally, advanced homework, for those who want, can create, write two sentences. You can be as creative as you want, and then you can read your sentences, two sentences only, Read your sentences in a voice message to me if you would like. So write two sentences and then you can send them to me and I will give you my reaction. And for those who are late or did not see the whole video, you can watch it subsequently to the live. Subsequent to the live means after the live. Subsequent to the live. I will upload this on my onto my YouTube channel. You can see it there. And my channel name is exactly like my YouTube, uh, my Instagram. So they're both the same, easy to find, although different pictures. Now we're going to move to your questions. We only have about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes left. So let's go to your questions on speaking. All right. Uh, oh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, others. Ruben, thank you. Ameliorate, Ruben, is a very good word. So let's take a look. I'm going to show these, and I'll repeat it for those listening who can't see it. Um, let's begin. Oh, that's not a word, so we're not going to use that. Uh, I don't think the second one's a word, so we're not going to do it. I'll pronounce the first one. It's shelf. The second one I don't think's a word. Here is a question from um, Aratus. Thank you. It's check, neck, night. Night is an, a middle ages. Uh, in the middle ages, there were knights who rode on horses in metal armor. You can also be knighted in England. Check, neck, night, or good night. Next we have, <clears throat> thank you, Saya, thank you, Saya. How to say, okay, how to say, Arish has this, very nice. How to say, eat, let's eat. So a lot of people ask me, what do you say for the French, bon appetit? So we don't have something in English, we normally say, let's eat, let's eat. All right, yes, I will keep this. This is a good one. Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Thank you, love of smile. Vulnerable. If you're vulnerable, you're weak and liable to exploitation. Liable to exploitation. L-I-A-B-L-E. -E. Liable. Look that word up. It's very good. Um, again, we'll do this one. Sit. Set. Thank you, Dr. Mamu. I think I got that right. All right, next. Oh, yes, thank you. So, Tatiana has asked the question, uh, why do we pronounce sign and signature differently? So, if you notice, sign, sign has a silent G, but signature, you vocalize or you sound the G. So sign, signature. And I believe 
you do this because it would be very difficult for English speakers to say signature, signature. It's very difficult without the G. The G gives you an, an ability to pronounce the word more easily. So listen to this. Signature, really difficult, doesn't sound very nice either. Signature, signature, gives you that hard G that you can move into the soft A. Signature, so it's a hard or vocalized G that allows you to pronounce that word. It's just, I think, facility. Just allows you to facilitate the pronunciation. Oh, how to pronounce synonyms, synonyms. All right. Um, I'm not going to pronounce bad words, unfortunately. Some of you are asking about bad words. I'm not going to pronounce those. I found... Okay, here are some good ones. Chairman, chairman. And we collocate that with chairman of the board. That's the most common collocation. Chairman of the board. All right, here's another one. <clears throat> Congestion. Congestion. Oh yeah, we've already had that one, but it's good to... Okay, here's one that's a similar sounds we've been practicing. America. 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 All right. Congestion is when you are... When you're full in your stomach and it's hard to breathe. You're coughing a lot. This is a difficult one. Strength. Strength. It's a, it's a version of strong. It's a va variation of strong. You have strength. It's an adjective. Here's a good one. Thank you very much, Riha. Tensions. 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 All right, back. Oh, here, I'm sorry, I didn't show you. So we have two words, back and bug. Little animal, little insects. Back, bug. Back, bug. Those can be tricky, I suppose. I didn't think about that. Oh, these are difficult and very advanced words. Who has written me that? Thank you. Alias, emollient. Very difficult words to pronounce and not often pronounced, the second one. Alias, and alias is another name you go by. So if my name is Chris, which it is, and I go by John, a completely different name. It's not a short name or a longer name. It's a completely different name. That's my alias. So Chris, comma, alias John says, that's how we use that or in a sentence, emollient, emollient, very difficult word. All right, let's do this one. This is a nice one for young learners. Eat, eight. Eat, eight. Oh, nice. Now, we have two ways of saying this, actually. Appropriate, what is appropriate, and the verb to appropriate. Do you hear the difference? What is appropriate in this situation? What's best? What's the right thing to do? What's appropriate in this situation? And then we need to appropriate this. To appropriate is to, I think, divide up and to parcel out to other people. Parcel, P-A-R-C-E-L. I'm sorry for all these big words. They just are the most appropriate in these circumstances. And that's, what, that's how you want to use big words. You don't want to use big words just to be cool. Although you can if you want. But the real purpose is to be precise. 
to be accurate. That's when you use big words, when you want a more definite meaning. And that's how I try to use it. When a better, when it's a more appropriate meaning, I use it. Distraught. 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 All right, we don't have much time left. We just have three minutes. Time is flying by when we're having so much fun. I hope you're having fun. Um, all right. Oh, this is nice. Very difficult words. Thank you. This is... Um, I can't actually read that. All right, well, thank you who wrote this. Euphoria, epiphany. Euphoria, epiphany. Now, euphoria is, if you're, and we collocate this to be in a state of euphoria. If you're in a state of euphoria, you're in ecstasy. You're so excited. You're thrilled and joyed beyond words, beyond description. You're in a euphoric state. That's the ad adjective. And epiphany is when you have a moment where something becomes very clear. We have an epiphany in our life. These are really important moments um, when you see, suddenly see things clearly. And I hope all of you have a few epiphanies in your life because they're generally very positive. You see the light. So this is there's an expression to see the light. It's an idiom to see the light means that you finally understand something that earlier had been unclear or difficult to understand. Now you have you had an epiphany. For Christians, um, there's the Apostle Paul in the in the Bible. He had an epiphany. Uh, when he became religious. So this is used in a very religious sense. So if you go to religious events, you will hear this word used often, an epiphany. And in fact, there's a religious holiday called the epiphany. Uh, and exactly what it means. All right, we are nearly finished. I have time for, let's do one more. By the way, I hope these classes are an epiphany for you and an eye-opening experience where you begin to see that you can improve your language, you can improve your pronunciation with methodical practice, consistent practice each week with me, and we're going to get this done. We're here all year, so we don't panic. We can gradually improve. Let's do one more, and then I have to say goodbye because they're going to shut me off. Um, oh. Okay, I'll do this one as a last one because there are several ways to say, I say vitamins, vitamins, and this is an American spelling, uh, pronunciation, vitamins, but the British say vitamins, the vitamins. So listen to the two acceptable pronunciations, vitamins vitamins, vitamins, U.S., vitamins, U.K. And I hope that my classes, that these classes will be vitamins or vitamins for your language skills. Thank you very much for your participation. I hope you found it helpful. And I invite you back next Saturday Join me then and invite a friend. It's at the exact same time. Thank you all very much and have a great weekend and see you next Saturday.